And here they are, Mario, I believe, won the die roll, which is a huge deal in this matchup. Uh, gonna go first and try to set up his field, uh, of course, hoping to hit uh, the dimension shifter. Let's see if he has what it takes. Uh, I see already a pot of duality and uh, maybe a Rubino. And, and a shifter for sure. <laughs> yeah, and here it is. Uh, what a better way to start the top eight than with the shifter from Mario right away. Nice stuff, actually, from Mario. Uh, we didn't get the chance to see the shifter being played by Diego in, during the top 64, but maybe he <laughs> will get the revenge. revenge. <laughs> Ooh, and Mario, with an interesting choice, actually decides to pick up the statue right away. I think uh, he already had a Robina, and now we actually get to see Etienne revealing a bestial, but he cannot summon it, of course. And this gives a huge information to Mario. Also has Necrovalli. Necro wow, yeah, he has Necrovalli in hand, which means that if he activates it now, he plays around the bestial from his opponent. Uh, and uh, he decides not to go for it, uh, which uh, is an interesting choice. I think it would have made a lot of sense uh, from uh, uh, Mario to prevent it, but uh, let's see what he has in mind. Definitely an interesting inclusion, as we mentioned already for Diego, they are playing Metaverse as well. But uh, here, the only thing that would make sense is if he wants to search the map uh, right here yeah. with the Ampen, I would guess. So let's see if that is the case. Because if he goes for the Dreaming Town, I think then it was always going to be better to go for Necrovalli right, right away. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, this is not the case. And Mario picks up the Dreaming Town, which could be a little bit of a mistake from the Italian if he goes for Necrovalli this turn. Let's see. Maybe he just wants to keep it because he knows with Shifter resolved, uh, his opponent will not act access the graveyard and this is the case so Mario does not go for Necrovalle and in the end phase uh, he, his opponent will be able to resolve uh, the Magna to get uh, maybe the Druid Swarm yeah. or another of his bestial monsters. Yeah I'm kind of skeptic about uh, the missed activation of Necrovalle I have to admit. Yeah because in that spot I think maybe it's the safest solution right? You just for go sure. for it and uh, Anyway, looks like Mario fails it and uh, Edeyan should not be making many moves uh, given that he's under Dimension Shifter. Absolutely. No, it does make sense to not want to activate it, but the thing is once Etienne reveals to you the bestial, I think you activate it yeah. just for that reason. But Let's see if he will be relevant uh, right here. Of course it is in terms of uh, not summoning uh, the statue. And now we get to see an instant fusion uh, from uh, Etienne. Really good card to pick up, of course. We have mentioned it plenty of times already. What do you think is he going for? Uh, it's an interesting uh, position here because he knows the Dreaming Town uh, plus the Flowandry's engine is there, which means he has to find a way to push for the Ampen without accessing his graveyard. So let's first of all check his extra deck uh, to see, for example, which rank 6 play he has. Uh, I think Beatrice, uh, yeah, and yeah. he does not play the Wallow. So he has the Beatrice, but he also has uh, the Zeus which could be an interesting uh, idea, uh, alongside, of course, uh, going for Baguska. Yeah. Yeah, I think Baguska is very annoying against uh, Slow Andres. Absolutely, it is one of those cards where even against uh, uh, Dimension Shifter, it's one of the solutions against a lot of these matchups, uh, uh, even against the Pendulum one that we, which we were talking about. And here we get to see actually a nice move uh, from Etienne uh, going for the one copy of Artbeat uh, to play around the Dreaming Town, forcing Mario to go for the statue if he feels like it, uh, and then attacking over the fragile little monster. So. <laughs> 
Let's see if that will be the case here. He also has terraforming, so if it wasn't for the shifter, yeah. what a dream end from Etiana. And yeah, yeah, here, here uh, we see the Perle Rhino. Yeah, it's just correct to put some pressure on Mario, no? Yeah, would you have liked uh, the activation uh, right away of the Art Beat, or do you think it's correct to just wait? And I think you can wait here. Okay. Yeah, you can wait. It's Because, uh, like, at the moment, Mario, uh, apart from the Amp, and uh, yeah, at the end knows that he has the, mm -hmm. the, the his set card, so I think it's... It's okay to, to keep the heartbeat. And I think here it is actually Mario who pulled the trigger and decides to go right away for this Dreaming Town. Uh, there won't be an answer apparently from Etiana. He doesn't even make him waste the heartbeat here. And he will be able to get a few of his things back. Uh, Yeah, and here there's the usual stuff uh, we also seen in the, in the top 64 match of Diego mm -hmm. with Diggle and Rubina. This we is could what see a uh, Tucan, which would be cute uh, here. And yeah, this is what's happening. Uh, he gets back uh, the Dreaming Town uh, that was banished by Shifter and then he's able to go for Apex Avian uh, just to shut down another interruption from his opponent uh, and get back uh, the Tucan uh, potentially instead. He goes for just the Eglen uh, and yeah, gives his deck back to his opponent for a shuffle. Uh, this is still somewhat risky, I gotta say, because if we see a normal summon, uh, for example, of uh, another bestial here, we could get into the Zeus. Uh, you, of course, have the Apex, uh, but you can still get a little bit of an annoying uh, presence on board. So not the end of the world for Etian, I gotta say. Yeah. And I really think him back to that Necro Valley, which is costing him a little bit here. Maybe some, a little bit of a team border rata. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if uh, it will cost him uh, team borders. this. Uh, let's see if Etian uh, might be holding uh, another bestial or... Yeah, oh, I mean, uh, face. yeah, he just goes to the battle phase. Uh, Gets rid of it in main phase two. Might go for Boygen. Let's see what he decides to do. A lot of options available uh, for Etienne. Is he just passing? Whoa. No, it is ah, doing okay, what I was no, saying. So he goes for the play I was mentioning, which is essentially a normal summon. And now he has access to Beatrice if he feels like that a good play. He didn't go for the Beatrice, uh, so he cannot go for the Zeus essentially yeah. uh, beforehand. But now Mario is just asking for some translation. Uh, and uh, at the moment uh, will be clarified that the Sherin gets to resolve uh, and maybe he goes for a Baguska afterwards. Let's see if he has access to another four. Wow, and actually Ooh. surprisingly, Mario goes for Apex uh, on the Sherin. Do you like that? I know, uh, the thing is that I'm wondering what Mario was afraid of in this situation uh, with the Sherin being activated. I mm -hmm. think Edian was forcing Mario to activate the Apex. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I would have not activated it. Yeah, because he's still under shifter and he already normal summoned. So it's not like he can uh, instantly go into the Baguska. And now we get to see the Beatrice eat the field uh, as expected. Really strong card. It was back in 2015. It is now also really, really good. Um, and when you make it uh, by not discarding a Burning Abyss, it's even better because you can use the effect right away. Yeah. Of course, not really useful now, but next turn it will be able to activate. So face down, most likely the Art Beat, which we know of. Yeah. And uh, now the play is back to Mario. And actually we see an activation right away in the draw phase. Could be because he knows of the Necro Valley. Maybe, let's see. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think this move from Etienne is correct uh, anyways, just to prevent, you know, any situation. Yeah, and this is uh, actually a pretty nice uh, sequence of play by doing this. Uh, is guaranteed to add both an Avnis and to resolve a fusion summon. So great stuff uh, by Etienne. And again, uh, that one Necrovalli misstep. Let's hope it's not going to cost Mario too much in this game. And yeah, here, as expected, we get to see the Avnis. Uh, we will resolve uh, the Fusion Summon. Of course, everything is summoned to defense position, as you can imagine. But now the really good thing is that the Perle Rhino also will be able to trigger and destroy the Empen. So a lot of advantage, I would say, going on uh, by Etienne, who Seems to be knowing uh, what he's doing. Uh, even the Mad Dragon is quite annoying. And yeah, Perle Rhino will activate, uh, getting rid of the Ampen. Uh, very nice sequence of play from Etian. Uh, kiting back, uh, fighting back against the Shifter. But now plays back to Mario. And I saw the one Metaverse, I believe, Ooh. which could be really interesting going on. Because we know the one Artbit is face down at the moment, but that is only out to Mystic Mine at all in main or at least main deck, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I'm still thinking about the Necro Valley not being activated from Mario very first turn, no? Yeah, now he has it, uh, but it seems like it's a little too late. Uh, the Beatrice uh, and the other TL cards already resolved, uh, so not exactly what you would wish for. But that's why we get to see instead a normal summon being chained with the Rubina. No response from Etienne who will uh, hope to get some really good meals with this Avni. So yeah. I'm uh, once again concerned by this Necro Valley not coming down. I mean, he knows that there is the, the art bit, but yeah. you, you have to force it at some point. So uh, his goal is probably to get rid of it uh, here. But it's not an easy task. And now Etienne again going to try his best. Um, we knew that there were a uh, statue in the end. Yeah. And now it will get uh, to the three, I think. Yeah. And here Mario is going, I guess, for the apex. Or oh, also has the rides up. Yeah, he also has the rides up. But does he have access to another summon this turn? I don't think so. He does not, and he has to be careful uh, because he cannot target some of these cards due to Mad Dragon protection effect. So this is not the easiest uh, play. Let's see what he wants to do. Maybe get him rid of the art bit uh, with the rides up. He could also try and clean some of this board. And yeah, let's see if there is a response from Etienne. So what he's doing is he's targeted the art pit to get on top this way he knows that his opponent doesn't have an art pit right away and he's actually getting rid of his own card and here comes down necro valley but it seems like it's a little late at the moment uh, with the metaverse face down though he has access to mystic mine whenever he feels like that could be good let's see plays back to etienne and now the situation seems uh, a lot more stable than it was just a couple of uh, turns ago so it could go either way really yeah. uh, really because like uh, Mario starting things off uh, let's say kind of okay um, I'm still thinking about you know that apex being activated on the Shireen because uh, now with the Beatrice online um, it's not easy to deal with this especially because there's a lot of stuff going on from Etienne although the Necro Valley is on the field And think here just to make sure uh, all the effects. Uh, <laughs> indeed, he's asking for a translation. You don't want to mess anything. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, as I was saying, when Ed asked me which oh, is my favorite uh, field spell of the game, uh, I, I told him that Necro Valley has changed the text so many times throughout the year. So you want to make sure you know exactly what it does at the moment. But just as I brought it for you guys on the screen, the 
most recent text is that the cards in the graveyard cannot be banished and it negates any effect that would move a card to the graveyard to a different place. So this is really strong card against Tear. So now the play is back to Etienne, who is resolving this Beatrice. Uh, uh, interesting decision because he knew the Art Pit was on the top of the deck, and by doing this instead, it obviously randomizes his deck. But he sends the crime, which will activate one of the effects which uh, are not super common, but thanks to the shifter, are now relevant, which is essentially going to get back the Banish Sharing, and is he playing just the one of uh, uh, Kit Kalos in the extra deck? Can we check? Yeah. Yes. So if he needs to access it, he would need to put it back with the crime, which he didn't. So it's actually tough to get to the art pit uh, like this now. And we go for an XYZ summon into the Zeus, maybe, but instead, Baguska in the extra monster zone. Interesting decision here by Etian. Yeah, this is something that we don't see quite often. Uh, yeah, but it's such a strong yeah. card in this specific matchup. But definitely an interesting uh, choice uh, to just uh, play it. Uh, in the extra monster zone, wow. And uh, he goes even for the normal summon, switch it to defense. You can see Marius uh, being a little <laughs> confused about what's going on. I'm wondering why he decided to summon the Baguska in the extra monster zone, if there's a specific reason for it. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting decision, and this is even more surprising. Uh, Mario going uh, for the Dream in Town. So gonna activate uh, just uh, the Robina. Let's see. Interesting stuff. And now Mario picks up his card, uh, hoping to get something going. He already had the Mystic Mine option, yeah. which honestly looked uh, promising. But now he picks up Ooh. a really good uh, card uh, for this specific situation. You can see Etienne shaking his head a little bit. It is uh, the one and only. And now, yeah, he's going to get rid of the Baguska for the Ampen and a good uh, crowd. Round of applause from the crowd. The, the Unexplored wins a really, really sick card. Uh, so well played by Mario with the Dreaming Town, I gotta say. Yeah, but this was the card that brought him to the top eight, actually. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, and this is not even that great. Uh, you go for the Soliac, but thanks to Necrovalle, the tier in your graveyard cannot resolve. And now we get to see the effect to put back a few of these uh, useless Flowanderies to get some more draws, uh, and he actually sends back the Ryza too. As you mentioned, this was the way he won in the top 16 against Federico, clutching an RP Feather Storm, which we know it's extremely powerful, and he picks up set rotation, not that useful at the moment, uh, but definitely a card that could pay some uh, uh, value in this yeah. match, especially after siding. And I think uh, here uh, with the Necro Valley and the Unexplored wins, Mario. It's definitely a tough spot. Uh, maybe let's take a look real quick at uh, the side deck from Etienne because I want to see if he has some option from timeout. Uh, uh, not too much, I gotta say. He only has the Scarra shot, uh, but of course that gotta be considered because uh, we are almost at 20 minutes down and uh, he, he has to consider whether he wants to try and stay in this game or he might uh, just uh, be done with it. So, normal summon from Etienne. Mario not really caring too much about it, uh, but uh, we might see again a negation from the Suliak and I think play is back to Mario once again. Essentially, the only line of defense at the moment is this Suliak from Etienne, but 
hardly gonna be enough uh, and prosperity comes down from mario who is in extreme control of this game one in top eight and let's see what he picks up actually quick spell could be a really good option uh, to play around the soliac uh, uh, and yeah, it's probably gonna be the best, yeah. exactly, yeah. Makes sense, uh, now he has a way to play around the Saliak from his opponent uh, and that's all really he needed. I think uh, soon enough uh, we are gonna see Etian uh, pick up uh, his cards unless Mario just makes uh, a huge misstep. And yeah, here we see the Robina and Etian, as expected, picks up his cards. Game one goes to Mario. That really was an incredible game one. Both players had their chance to advance. It seems as if the opening from Mario was really, really strong, but then a little bit of a weird decision there with the Necro Valley not being activated on turn one. He might have shut down his opponent completely, but then he kept his composure. He's not used to playing on stream, we no. gotta admit, but he still recovered, kept his calm, used the Raiza to shuffle back the art beat, and then from from then on, it was really an easy, easy way to this win in game one. But the clutch card, I gotta say, was at the very least the wins uh, to get rid of Baguska, which uh, is just so, yeah, so strong. Yeah, that was incredible. Uh, I mean, I think Mario really Bapumba. wants to see this card uh, as often as he can. Arriva Bumba. Like, uh, Arriva uh, for real. Arriva. <laughs> and in this case, he arrived for real. So now game one goes to Mario. So we can take a look at their side decks. Uh, what do you think uh, is Etienne going to try and do to win this game too? So looking at his side deck, he has twin twisters, which uh, okay, I think uh, it's uh, more than fair. And uh, we saw Mario playing in the top, in the top previously, yeah. and uh, one of the most annoying cards, which unfortunately Tian is not playing, is Zombie Ward, yeah. which uh, we saw like Federico, like everybody, like in the top cut is one of these annoying cards against Flo Andres. Of course, he's not playing Zombie yeah. Ward now. But the card that is <laughs> going to side in is Twin Twisters. And there is one card which might be even better than Zombie Ward, yeah. which is three copies of There Can Only Be this one. one. There Can Be Only One. It's uh, <laughs> such a strong card against Flo Wander. He's both going first and second. He's playing three copies, and Mario has only a couple tools to get rid of this annoying continuous trap card. Uh, alongside it, uh, basically, Tian just adds the call by the grave to try and hit the shifter, which really won Mario game one. Uh, and on the other end, uh, the Italian, just like Diego, same decklist, card by card. Uh, he's playing a lot of cards for going second, Mystic Mind, Dark Ruler, and he just adds evenly matched uh, alongside maybe the Cosmic, if he knows about there can be. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, if he doesn't, then I'm even skeptic that he would put it in. But outside of that, he has the one dimensional fissure. Will we see it? Uh, I'm not sure, but our players are ready. So let's find out who will be the winner of game two. Here they are, so Etian going first in this game two. Let's see if he can put up a board. Good round of applause from the crowd supporting their friend. So let's see. Good start already with the Berle Rhino. Great, great. You can set up a Shuffler with a tier card in the graveyard and basically that acts as an out to Mystic Mine, which surely be on the mind of Etienne when going through his deck. But we don't see a Dimension Shifter from Mario, so I'm sure he will be a sigh of relief from the German player already, who is sprinting through this combo. Yeah, especially because I think if he had the chance to watch uh, previously our uh, top 64 future matches, he might know Mario is playing Diego's same list, being the same team, and uh, there are the Ghost Sisters in the side deck. Absolutely. He might be seeing a Game 3 happening. Yeah. 
Spooky Dogwood is in the side deck of Mario, so if we ever get to a game free with a few minutes remaining, then that could come in handy. But for now, still plenty of time left for this top eight match. And uh, we gotta say, for both of these players, or at least for Mario, this is their best performance ever, which means uh, it's not easy to compete uh, once you are in the top eight of, by the way, yeah. the biggest ever single European event of all time so this is uh, huge and look at these meals from uh, Etienne uh, eating uh, really well at least a couple of names uh, with the Saliak uh, able to search an Avnis potentially and of course the Merli so nice setup uh, let's see which combo he thinks it's the best for this uh, specific matchup we have seen with Diego how when you focus yourself on Ishizu card like Agido and Kelbeck, uh, it's actually quite annoying for Flo Andres. So, especially because like if you get this the, the, your statue milled, uh, you're in trouble. Yeah, because that's basically uh, it's tough. a very tough one. Uh, we got to see basically the Agido in action, uh, uh, and there was at least uh, 15 to 20 cards being milled in uh, the top cut match. And here we see even another. Garura, which could get him a draw. Now he's gonna be late. Uh, let's see if he eats any of these Agidos uh, or Kelbeck. Uh, he's gonna be the top eight cards of his deck. Uh, another Saliak, not really the greatest at the moment. Uh, kind of a whiff, but the final Diviner is actually pretty clutch uh, to guarantee a Baron potentially with a uh, elf play. So I think Diviner was one of the best meals at the very end, saving these atrocious eight meals. But he could just, uh, you know, continue to yeah. extend his field. But the Diviner makes a ton of a difference. You can get five more meals, guarantee a Baron, which is great in this matchup. So great, great stuff. Yeah, here without the end. Diviner, it would have been, uh, let's say, a week meal but yeah. uh, but I mean now. here he has already a lot of stuff going on uh, mind that he shouldn't overextend too much uh, we mentioned it three copies of mystic mine three copies <laughs> of evenly matched three copies of dark ruler no more all of these cards are in the deck from Mario so if you overextend you can get punished significantly we saw it even in the top 16 against Federico where he opened double evenly matched plus a negation yeah. and that could cost you the game if you play recklessly but I'm sure Etienne as mentioned as the diviner which means uh, he actually goes uh, for another shuffler instead of milling five interesting Ooh, okay this is something that uh, we haven't seen uh, previously in our future match in which you wanted the flow under is uh, to mill more cars yeah this is not the case he's going for the baron sets one and looks like that is it, so Mario picks up a card, it is a pot of duality, does he have what it takes to fight this impressive opening from the German player? Let's see. And he does start things off with duality, I don't think Etienne is interested in involving with it. But he has so many good cards and he actually Ooh. negates with Baron the pot of duality, wow, brave move. I really did not see that coming, but I guess uh, he doesn't want to face uh, the Dark Ruler. So, gonna mill three and he gets Ooh. both the Kelbeck and the Agido, that's huge. Gonna mill 10 cards off the deck. Uh, what a jackpot here by the German player. And yeah, 10 cards are getting milled. Let's see who they are. I see a Scream. Shireen, uh, crime, uh, so kind of a mid uh, mill, and yeah, nothing too relevant uh, for the Italian. Yeah, I think honestly, Mario was pretty happy with his mills. Yeah. Uh, while uh, from Etienne, uh, they could have been better. He has one fusion summon and essentially one uh, add which might not even resolve if uh, crime was milled and then maybe the Saliak is face down. Yeah. Let's see. Also, good information from Mario that uh, at the end, uh, milled, uh, there can only be one. So, he yeah. might be holding. He knows it. The worst case scenario, if he loses this game, uh, he has to prepare for it in game three. So, I saw a trap card from Mario. Yeah. So, that hmm. could be a sneaky, evenly matched, you know? Could be. He milled one, so. 
Yeah. But uh, why Let's not? See if we hear the dread enter battle phase from Mario. And he actually goes for a shuffler. Interesting. This will basically guarantee that he gets to add one of these. Uh, maybe crime. Uh, it's uh, the one he wants to add. Yeah. Looks like it. And maybe a twin twister, I would say. Or maybe a just another name. Let's see what he wants to put back in the deck. It okay. is the Shireen. And now he shuffles free back. And essentially the Kid Carlos can get him the crime he just put back. Or maybe something else. Yeah, he gonna mill once again, uh, trying to mill five. Uh, let's see what they are, and it's Merli plus Avnis. Uh, so Ooh. really good mills uh, by Etienne. Ooh, though, we have to mention, with the crime in Grave, we know that the face down is not crime, is overextending so much. If there is an evenly matched from Mario, this game could be over in the blink of an eye. And, and there it is. it is, evenly matched from Mario already. That's what I was Oof. saying. Negating part of duality was actually so brave from Etienne. But, you know, the braveness and foolishness of men are a thin line. And so we'll see at the end of this game whether it was a correct or too extreme decision. And we have to guess that uh, the last card Etienne is holding uh, must be a copy of There Can Be Only One. And now Mario, let's see Barbit, if, yeah. if he saw that coming. Face down could be the heartbeat uh, at the moment and not really interested in having any of it. Uh, so, yeah, just continue with his plays, but I'm still shocked by this. Uh, and it is actually the There Can Be. Wow. He had it. Uh, this is a good one yeah. because I don't think Mario will say it coming, honestly, when no siding way. in. No yeah. way. And this is such a strong card against uh, the Flu Wander is deck. Uh, but with the wins on the field, keep in mind that that could be a way to out this card. It's really, really, really strong. But there is a few options because you can actually set potentially so uh, let's see what this will involve uh, if uh, uh, the is I think he's talking to the yeah. judges about potentially setting it uh, from the field uh, and this is actually what's gonna happen uh, let's see well played by the Italian getting rid of the there can be by setting it this is exactly what I was saying with the unexplored wins uh, I think fantastic play and now the normal summon enables some combos from Mario, so Etienne will need to play really carefully with this Shireen. And he just Ooh, sets he one passes. and passes back to his opponent. Wow. What a shock. Yeah, we didn't see that coming, honestly. And here's and another it's a one. second copy. Wow. Crazy stuff uh, here. Mario is using the effect to draw one card, but I don't think he ever sided in the Cosmic Yeah, Cyclone. I would be shocked if he did, so he's probably just going to rely on this Empen and hope that his opponent doesn't pick up any way to play the game. And yeah, play is back to Etienne. Really, really crazy game two here in the top eight. But now the Rhino comes down. Mario is cut off from activating his field spell. And I think uh, this was a really good way for Etienne to win game two, potentially. What a shock, but honestly, really <laughs> lucky to pick up two yeah. copies of yeah. the trap card. Yeah. For sure. Uh, without the other one uh, being uh, drawn, I think uh, we will not see uh, this situation here. Oh, uh, no way. The game would have been over right there. So, of course, now it's uh, really just a matter of time. It's pretty easy for Etienne to find enough damage, uh, plays well around the Empen uh, using uh, the kit. And now it will spin it back to the deck, uh, which at the same time gives an out to Mario. Yeah. We gotta keep that in mind, but I think he doesn't have that much time at the moment. Uh, so this will be tough for the Italian. Let's see.
now deal some damage to Mario and uh, this there can only be one uh, I think this is literally shutting down Mario's strategy which thought that okay I got rid of the first one then this other one I think it, it's going to be very difficult yeah. to get rid of and you can see here Mario thinking about it maybe the Mystic Mine it is Mystic Mine for Mario still in this game completely and maybe if there are no outs, uh, this could be a tough one. But here we see some shuffling back. We knew that there was a Twin Twister in the graveyard, so Mario cannot rely too much on Mystic Mine. Well played by Etienne here, recognizing what he needs to do. And he shuffled back even the, there can be only one. Why not? Just in case you need one more. Why not? And yeah, here goes the Perle Rhino, just gonna try and thin his deck as much as possible. And yeah, play is back uh, to Mario. This will be a quick one. Who finds the out first? Uh, actually a pretty nice one. If it might add to bet on one of them, it would probably be at the end. Just because, as you mentioned, uh, it could be the case that Mario didn't even bring those yeah. in. Uh, but yeah, he's gonna at least have this effect to draw and keep changing his hand. I think he drew another of the Flowanderies. So yeah, plays back to Etienne who picks up. Uh, let's see, we can't quite see the card that he just drew. But so many good outs. Yeah, and plays just back to Mario <laughs> again. Who picks up the Feather Duster. Wait, this could actually <laughs> change so much. Feather Duster is picked up by wow. Mario and there he goes. He actually kept that in. Crazy. And this can change the game completely. He doesn't really need much to OTK. Wow, keeping the Feather Duster Really, really good decision there by Mario. Didn't see it coming. Uh, and this could be the end of the game uh, that is going. Uh, just uh, keep on being uh, surprised. Uh, the game that keeps on giving. Let's see if he manages uh, now with the Rubina. Yeah. He has the unexplored wins, uh, which, which he can get rid of a lot of cards from his opponent uh, playing with fire though because he needs to be careful about his own mystic mine yeah. uh, you really don't want to lose to your own card right there and we see the herald from uh, etienne here which is actually kind of annoying uh, discarding a Kalbeck that cannot be activated but if mario has the map in his hand this could be but i saw it's just double shifter and dark ruler in the end from mario which now basically will pass his turn back to Etienne, who is really, really capable in keeping his odds as live as possible. Yeah, I don't think Mario has uh, used it, so let's see this draw from Etienne. Does he finally pick up an out of his own, or is he just gonna wait? Uh, I think he goes for maybe a Baguska here to stall the game even longer, and yeah, there he goes. He was afraid of dying in the previous turn, so why not guarantee a Baguska? Which, by the way, is a mandatory effect, yeah. which even under Mystic Mine detaches. So that's interesting to know. And I saw Mario picking up a Cosmic Cyclone, which so means he even that, add uh, those. Yeah. yeah. Now we can use the Unexplored Winds, but wow, he actually goes for the statue. Really bold play here by Mario, who just wants to add some of these uh, birds back from the Vanish pile. Interesting. And now he actually sends back one to pick up a draw. What is it gonna be? I couldn't quite tell, but Mario sets a card. Might even be a bluff and play is back to Etienne, who, as we mentioned, needs to detach one from Baguska. Still did not pick up the Twister. Yes, Scream and a bunch of monsters. And we gotta keep in mind that there are only seven minutes remaining in the clock. 
and Mario is ahead, even though if by just 300 life points, uh, this game uh, could also be over in time. And if not, uh, we might see one of our first sudden match death matches we have ever seen, which would be pretty cool, if yeah. you ask me. And this prosperity here uh, can be devastating. Let's see what Mario picks up. A lot of choice, a lot of choices from here. Um, I think, okay, he gets the field spell. Pretty good pickup. Uh, and we know that he has the Dark Ruler in hand. And here Ooh. he comes, Dark Ruler from Mario with the map as well. This could be over right here. He cannot, of course, deal life points damage to his opponent, but he can get rid of the whole field. And this is huge from the Italian player again, finding a way this deck just doesn't want to give up. <laughs> and the hopes of, you know, all of you supporting Alberto's <laughs> little bet <laughs> might just be there. So great, great pickup by Mario here. And as expected, he now gets rid of a couple of his opponent cards, resolves the amp and so much advantage coming from the Italian player. Wow. He was able to basically wait. Uh, unfortunately, Tian didn't find any of his twin twister out of his deck. And uh, now Mario is clearing Etienne's field. Mario in his hand picking up uh, that field was like ora basta and he activated <laughs> the dark ruler and was done with it and enough mystic mine for the day I just want to get these things going again reminder he cannot deal damage to his opponent due to the dark ruler but look at this field impressive stuff from Mario is there hope for Etienne or could this be the end of this top eight match? Definitely seems really tough for Etienne to fight back. Is he gonna try his best with this cream? Doesn't really accomplish much at the moment. This seems like it could be over real soon. So hang on tight and don't leave this match. You could be missing the end. And wow, the art beat actually getting sent to the graveyard. Not what you want to see here from Etienne. At least he gets to add one from the graveyard back. But I don't think this matters all that much. With Baguska already gone. You see here Mario even uh, almost BMing, we could say. Yeah, this seems like it's gonna be Flo Wonder is advancing. And there goes the handshake. What a match, honestly, from the right start. It seems as if it was going to be a very tense battle. Maybe not so much in game one, although we got to mention that it was still quite back and yep. forth. But Shifter and then Necro Valley were just too much and shut down the duel right away. But this game, too, was so back and forth. It was incredible, honestly. I think because, like, for a moment we wow. thought that ATN uh, was able, basically, to get the game, especially because he had a lot of things going on in the graveyard with the Keldo, yeah. a lot of good meals, especially he started with three different names, actually, two tier elements and then the Keldo absolutely, in the graveyard. Absolutely, absolutely. And then there was a There Can Only Be One when we said, maybe Mario didn't side in the Cosmic Cyclones, which could have made sense, honestly. Absolutely. But then he uh, picked up not Cosmic, but Arby <laughs> Feather <laughs> Duster, <laughs> which was even better. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was just what he needed. But for the entirety of Game 2, we really couldn't quite tell who was going to win it. Uh, it. For so many different moments, it seems as if one of the two was in advantage uh, at the very beginning uh, with the strong opening uh, from Etienne. Then, I have to be honest with you, the decision of negating part of duality with Baron, yeah. I think, costed him the match because if he just waited for the evenly match, then that was over. But yeah, afterward, we get to see the evenly matched. It seems as if the game is over, but then uh, there can be only one uh, their face up uh, from Etienne. 
Mario finding again the, the only chance of getting rid of the one copy and Etienne eating him with the second copy. What a crazy match. And then again, Mario with the Mystic Mine. And then finally, after a long hard fought duel, where basically it turned into this weird top deck in war, where if either of the shoe was gonna pick up the out to either Mystic Mine for Etienne, or there can be for Mario, they were gonna win the game. As you mentioned, he picked up the RP Fighter Duster. He was actually stopped, we gotta be honest, yeah. by the Herald from Etienne. But then he couldn't quite come up with a strong enough field. He went for Baguska and he got punished by Dark Ruler no more, plus a top deck field spell, which was clutch because Mario risked losing to his own Mystic Mine. Instead, he was able to pick up the map and ripristino la verità in this <laughs> one match. But yeah, congratulations to both for really putting out a show. And uh, at the very end, we're still uh, kind of happy for the two of them. Uh, really huge show competing and getting to the top eight. It's a huge achievement in such an event, but hope is not lost, you know? <laughs> hope is not lost because uh, the remaining decks, we don't quite know the players yet. We know that they're gonna be really good, that I can assure you, yeah. but it's gonna be Mario against the three Ishizu T-Element decks. Can he be able, will he be able to beat them and actually claim the title? Funny enough, the finals were actually an Ishizu tier mirror match back uh, last weekend in Pasadena. Yeah. But right before that, uh, when Chris LeBanc won, it was again Flo Andres. So it is a deck that can and is capable of getting there. And we just saw it. Yeah. Chu O. Oh. I mean, the victory. deck is still very annoying to play against, and especially like uh, I think this be deck uh, built in this way, also with the Negro Valley, the addition yep. of Metaverse getting you also the Mystic Mine on the line, and going first, you have the Arpis Feather Storm, which Absolutely. are incredible, honestly. I think I would be scared uh, if uh, I was to play Mario in the top four. So. And to be honest, I gotta say, this was also arguably one of the most important matches of the day because now Mario and whoever is gonna join him is basically guaranteed a copy of the new prize card, another verse dragon. Of course, still need to win that third and fourth place, but we all know that Mario and whoever advances actually wanna have a look at this beautiful trophy. Still early, still early. We got one more match for you before going to the finals and it will be the top four. But before we do that, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, this was the top eight of YCS Dorman. We have Ed ready with Mario for the winner interview. Thank you, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Mario right now, the winner of our top eight feature match, Flu Andres versus the Ishizu Tailments, which we've seen quite a lot in this. First of all, Mario, congratulations to you. How does it feel? You're now into the top four. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel amazing, and uh, it's my first top four in a big tournament. So I... First ever one? First, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, uh, no, it's the second feature I won. And it's the first time that they got top four in a big event, yeah. That's very exciting. Well, congratulations. That's already an achievement in itself. Perhaps you'll take it one step further, get into those finals, maybe even win it. Still a possibility at this point. Now, I will say, out of everyone else in the top eight, you're the only deck that's not Ishizu tier. So there were a lot of people that were rooting for you just based on the fact that they don't want to see pure mirror matches for the rest of this. How does that make you feel being sort of the one unique deck that's now up there compared to the rest of this competition. Yes, it's true that is uh, the only deck remain except of Ishizu Tehara, but uh, from what there is, is not so loved because it has a lot of cards that uh, uh, really, I, I hate myself, my deck. So, <laughs> so but it's, uh, I feel uh, really nice about this because I tested a lot with my friends and uh, um, together we, we build a really strong uh, uh, list, uh, as you can see again in the future match against uh, Teare Shizu. 
It's gone incredibly well for you. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's not the most loved deck in the world, but frankly, everyone's sort of getting a little bit angry about yeah, yeah, seeing yeah. the amount of Ishizu yeah. tier. So maybe we'll see you in the final. Maybe we'll see another <laughs> flu versus Ishizu, but yeah. who knows? We'll see. Let's talk quickly about the game. There was a shifter straight off the bat for you in game one. So that was obviously very helpful. Yeah. You managed to remove the Baguska with the unexplored wins and the Stry. Prosperity meant you could play against the Saliak and then he scooped. So how are you feeling in the first game? I, well, I, I am really amazed because I think that I played really well, really well in order to resolve Necro Valley because I know that he has the out set. It. So I use Ryza and then activate Necro Valley with the trap. But obviously that shifter in the first turn was really strong because my list is strong, but it's not so consistent. A lot of cards against Ari Shizu, so you can brick when you start, and that start was good. You had a couple of very good times where you just basically had what you needed to respond to almost everything that came up. So game two, a big evenly matched from you. There was a couple of moments where, you know, there was some, there can only be one back to back that you had to deal with. Mystic Mind from you though, the Harpy's Feather Duster, which wiped the Pellerino and the There Can Only Be One. The Dark Ruler No More, swap mine out for map attributed the Baguska away, he couldn't play, so he surrendered. So that was basically game two. So you were having to keep quite composed and work through every single thing that he was putting up against you. What was going through your mind in game two? I was really sure about that ruling uh, to set Empen and the tribute the, there can be, because I know that uh, set a big, a big one is still considered a, a tribute summon. So wins let, let that. But I, if... Uh, he got the counter on the first uh, turn, uh, he were won, but uh, that heavily resolved and the game was normalized, e equalized. And after that, uh, RP Feeder Duster was really amazing. It was really amazing. It was a great moment and a great duel in general. So congratulations to you for getting into the top four. We're going to be seeing those very shortly, so I will be allowing you to go off and get mentally prepared for that semi-final. But thank you very much, you guys, for watching this top eight. We will be back very soon with another quick feature match before we get into that final. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back.